It was the most eerie, surreal thing I'd ever seen. It looked like a war zone. Just hell. My daughter looked at me and she said, are we gonna die here? There's no medical services here. Tens of thousands of people have been stranded, many without food, water, and medical supplies. The Mississippi Gulf Coast was a total loss. Dialysis is for patients who have kidney failure. Any fluid you take in, if your kidneys aren't working, it's hard for you to get rid of that fluid so it accumulates in your body. Eventually it will cause death. You know, after Katrina hit the Mississippi Gulf Coast, all dialysis units were knocked out from New Orleans all the way to Mobile, except for this unit that's here in Orange Grove, right above Gulfport, Mississippi. Flooding is, is really bad for us, as well as not having power. Um, that's gonna, we're not gonna be able to dialyze if we don't have those two things. Katrina came through the Mississippi Gulf Coast on a, on a Monday. I got in the car and, and headed down to the Gulf Coast just to see you know, what I needed to do. The eerie thing is it was completely black. There were no lights on, it was a moonless night. Nothing was open, everything was damaged. I turned to go to our Orange Grove unit. I saw the light and it was on. And the unit was up and running. It was actually open and dialyzing patients. I came in and I walked in the unit and the staff there started crying. They had sent their families away. They had stayed back to take care of the patients. And they didn't know if their families were safe. Their families didn't know if they were safe. Everybody was scared. We was terrified. We didn't know where to go. Uh, what they do until they told us. You couldn't communicate with anybody. When you see like cell phones not working and, and power lines down just one after another, all phone lines, nothing was working. bus that showed up and it was full of patients and then there were just cars that just started coming to the clinic. These weren't our patients. These were patients from all over that just needed dialysis. Everybody was just trying to make heads and tell what was going on. It was a little bit overwhelming. Their first question was what do we do? I just looked at them and said we do what we always do. We take care of whoever walks in the door. Patients were coming in and out, and our faces is what they saw. We couldn't show how upset we were or how hurt we were or worried about what we had or what we didn't have. Knowing that the patients were here, they saw a smile on my face every day. They did everything they could to help you, especially, you know, like me, having so many health problems. Even though it's they lost their homes, lost everything, every personal belonging they had, they got up and came to work every day. My family was in Atlanta, and I you know, stayed here. The shifts was like between 12 and 16 hours. That pace was steady, it didn't stop. And once somebody get off, someone else got back on. We knew we had to get it done and I mean, we just did it. When you have an extreme situation, you go to extreme measures to make sure people are safe. This unit was running 24 hours because we had to take care of every patient along the coastline that, that was still here. The one thing that we really needed to overcome was the fact that our staff who were gonna to have to take care of these patients had lost their homes. And a lot of them did not have anywhere to live. Job one for us in any disaster is taking care of our patients. But in order to take care of our patients, we really have to take care of our employees first. They said, don't worry about the cost. Don't worry about uh, making a bad decision. Just don't hesitate. Go get what you need, ask for what you need, but take care of these people. We immediately decided to bring RVs from around the country. We brought all the RVs, probably about 30, into this lot. It's amazing what it looked like 10 years ago. It was like a little town. Sydney has supported the people on the ground. There was one team, one group, and with one purpose, and the purpose was no longer survival. The one singular focus was patient care. really was an amazing time for 
people to regain the fact that they were humans, taking care of humans and everything else was thrown away. It didn't matter about any of that outside noise. You focused on one thing and that was caring for your patients. It's very personal because Dallas's patients come three times a week and they're their extended family. Over the course of the years, you become very, very personal with the patients. You learn about their families, they learn about your families, and you really become to love them over the years. It was a relief to see a face that you really cared to see, you know, that you depended on and that you knew was going to be there for you. It was a good feeling. It was to know that our patients had survived and that we didn't have any, you know, that had lost their lives. I've been a Dyer's patient for 15 years. Well, I feel like, you know, they my family, you know, my team support. I'm here more than I am with my family. I'm honored to take care of him, so I'm honored to be called his nurse. I'm definitely very privileged. On a day-to-day -day basis, we get so jaded with how people are and how they treat each other, but I was so amazed at how people were so giving. Everybody pulled together and we came through real blessed. We did. Being able to help these people overcome so they could help the patients overcome was something that I'll never forget. If I ever had a doubt that people would come together, that's all been dispelled. I've never seen such an outpouring of love from staff and their patients and a company.